Hello friends, thanks so much for joining us here again today at Non-Toxic Health. We're glad when you join us. We are continuing our study. What is the name of it again? Put down <laughs> your sword and fight. <laughs> In the last video, we did talk about our memory. We're getting dumber. <laughs> we are a couple of dum-dums coming to you. Yeah. Um, Dum-dumville. <laughs> U.S. Okay. Uh, all right, so we, we wrapped up we were talking about um, how this discussion here in Ephesians is not about non-native EMFs. It's not about EMF shielding clothing. <laughs> no, but um, we, we were talking about the breastplate of righteousness, and she talked about not that doesn't mean you go out and buy a, uh, a suit of armor like some somebody out there, what he was some, suggesting. some person out there. This, I mean, and then we talked about how love or the... I don't know what you're talking about right now. The the, the terms love, um, righteousness, um, truth, peace, those are not things that you can hold on to. Right. So where on earth you get that the breastplate of righteousness would be something physical, um, just not thinking. False prophet. False prophet, not thinking. <laughs> Well, so. prophet skewing and manipulating and perverting the word of the Lord. All right, so the Christians. This we're talking about the Christians' armor, the real Christian, mm -hmm. real true, real true follower of Yeshua. This is our armor. Um, this is moral. This is spiritual. It, it says twice in this passage to put on the whole armor of God. So not just one piece or two piece or three pieces, all of it. So that means that all of it is important. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right. And the, all of it would be from your head to your toes. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about in, in previous videos how, um, I mean, even some... So, let's figuratively talk about a suit of armor. I mean, they have... has a head... And usually it has a, a visor thing that comes down over your eyes. And then it covers your torso. And um, I don't know, some of them might cover your legs. I'm, I'm not sure. But the reason I bring that up is the video that I'm talking about, we discuss how what you see and what you hear, how those, how those things affect your soul, your heart. So, if you're not protecting yourself figuratively from head to toe, um, not watching what you bring into your mind, which affects your heart, then it gets much harder to withstand, um, say somebody comes at you, and I mean, this is, somebody comes at you with a Pandora's box of uh, what's going on in the world, you're all... Get, you're trying to pay your dump fee, and all of a sudden, they they do this. You're like, whoa! You got to know how to respond to that, and you can't if you're not spiritually protecting yourself from the evils of the world. Mm -hmm. So we are in Ephesians chapter six, in verse thirteen. We already discussed. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So withstand means that you stand against, you resist. If there is an edict that comes down that says that you have to do X, Y, Z, then your response should be, okay, what does the Bible say about it? That should be your first response. It shouldn't be get angry, get mad. It should be, okay, what does God tell me to do about it? Is this in the Bible? Is it in Scripture? And if it's in Scripture, then you do what the Bible says. It, does it say it's an abomination? Because if it says an abomination, then you don't do it. You resist it. You say no. And that's that. Uh, but it doesn't mean that, as we'll find in this study, uh, it will become very clear to you because it's in Scripture that we are not to uh, fight physically. We're not to fight um, in the courtroom. 
we're not to go to the Supreme Court with things. We're not to hold riots or have riots or do all sorts of, I don't know, all the things that people are doing today <laughs> to fight the New World Order. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, no, that's not what we're supposed to do because our battle is not with these people. So, she's listing all these things that we're not supposed to do. What is one way that one can approach a situation where somebody has told you um, what they do and it sounds pretty it sounds pretty evil, it sounds pretty mean. What is one way to approach a situation like that that is a little bit more loving? Um, what one example, um, I, I'm just gonna just gonna tell you. Um, you don't argue with them. Um, we were told in a previous video that arguing is a fool. That's a fool's game. Um, approach it with how you do things, um, and if you don't do any, if you don't do things any different, then uh, well. You, <laughs> Our cats cat, just going our nuts. Cats going nuts. So, <laughs> um, approach it with how you would do, how you do things, uh, instead of telling them that they're wrong, they're idiots, these things. That will generally, I mean, in my experience, that's uh, that shuts people up pretty quick. But um, but it doesn't cause. A, I'm, I'm serious. I haven't. I've done that a time or two, and every single time I do that. They don't have a word to say. No, that's a great approach. <laughs> it's a great approach. But the reason that I chuckled a little bit is because it confuses people. <laughs> they don't know. They're like, wait, what? you what? don't fight? I mean, what? this has happened at least twice. And I've told yeah. her about both of them. And both both situations, the people were just dumbfounded. They didn't know what to say. And I, in the one situation... Um, just you know, we we tried once and it didn't go anywhere. So what's the point? I don't. It's kind of pointless to you know the, the saying out there: "Stop beating a dead horse." Well, there you go. So not saying that we're perfect around here at all, but there are specific ways to handle specific things that tell people there is a different way that doesn't. Um, well, I do it this way. And um, they don't. It's not casting judgment on what they no. do. It's just saying, well, this is how I handle it. And so that is how you shine your light in the darkness. Because then the darkness doesn't know how to handle it. No, it seriously doesn't. <laughs> they don't know how to handle the light. I have yet to come across someone who knows how to, who, who knows how to deal with that, especially when it is so different. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. So stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. We already looked at that. Mm -hmm. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Um, righteousness is the fulfillment of God's claims. It's conforming, it's conforming to his authority on your life. It stands in opposition to lawlessness. And lawlessness is like Aleister Crowley's do what thou wilt. You be you. Speak your truth. Okay, well, if I say this is toxic and you say this is non-toxic... One of us is not speaking truth. Somebody's lying. Somebody hasn't done their research. Yeah, so speak your truth. That's that's an irrelevant statement. So we are conforming to God's authority. So if there's a, a new mandate, then you see what God has to say about it in his scripture, and you do your research on it. You learn the truth about it. Uh, you know, And oftentimes in your research, you'll find perhaps some evidence that you can provide to an employer that says, hey, well, maybe this isn't such a good idea, medically speaking. And you have to, she's doing a thing about how she does research, but I can tell you that you can't go to just one source. You can't just, I mean, in, in some cases, I mean, places like, places like Google, DuckDuckGo, they, it is publicly known that they filter their results. They they have a a crowd of people that they want to influence, and 
they they filter their duct duct does does that is starting to do that too but um, you have to be well rounded and check multiple multiple sources to come to a well rounded decision about whatever it is you might be researching mm -hmm. so. So, um, in dis this discussion of righteousness, we go to Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm actually going to read more than I planned. Starting in verse 21, If so be that ye have heard him, being Christ, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, again, think, mm -hmm. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So if you're putting on the new man, I see this as the armor of God. Wow, that thing is loud. Yeah. <laughs> That's our, my, our water distiller. I didn't realize how loud it was until it shut off. Yeah, it's very loud. <laughs> yeah, so if you're putting on the new man, then in my opinion, I mean, this, this, is, this, this has direct correlation to the armor of um, of God. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. I was talking about anger earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, be ye angry and sin not. It doesn't say that anger is a sin. Okay, because anger isn't a sin. But be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So if mm -hmm. you get angry, don't sin. I'll tell you, um, first, the, the first time I I heard about that. Uh, I don't know who told me. Maybe it, it might have been a biblical thing, but at, at that point in time, I doubt it because I wasn't really studying that at all. Um, might have been my, she might have told me. I don't know. It was my mom. Was it your mom? Mm -hmm. That was her marital advice to us. Not to let uh, not to let the sun go down in anger. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the, my my dad gave me some great advice. Uh, you know, making, I forget exactly what, it had to do with keeping your wife happy. Do Happy wife, happy, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. And not letting the sun go down in anger. That, and it's those two things in themselves, started a uh, very, uh, very good marriage. I mean, we, if we, you know, we never went to bed angry. I mean, we tried really hard not to. So. Yeah. Yeah, but the next verse is neither give place to the devil. So when people are <laughs> angry, it's much more likely that they listen to the devil and his minions. And I will tell you that if you are struggling in your faith at all, um, one of the best things to do if you are angry, leave the situation. I'm not saying forever. I'm, I'm saying... Go for a walk, go for a drive, do whatever. Get get the steam out of you. And then come back, come back to the situation when you're calm. Mm -hmm. um, having a Christ-like heart, soul, and mind, um, you don't have to leave because you're able to handle every situation differently you can I mean I don't I don't we don't get angry we catch ourselves a lot more often and we do what's called buddy reboots yes yeah I, so we had a <laughs> cat for 10 years I think he was a senior cat and whenever he, whenever he came upon something that he didn't like or something that was problematic or something that he didn't expect then he would stop and he would go in a little circle and reboot himself and try to figure out what to do now and so um, <laughs> that's what we do like when we get frustrated or whatever with one another mm -hmm. or um, have a spat etc um, because we are married and that sort of thing happens then one of us will say buddy reboot we're, we're married we live in a 600 square foot house we run a business and we are around each other <laughs> very regularly yeah. so Every once in a while, the devil creeps in, mm -hmm. and um, we don't like each other for a minute. Right. So we're we're what the Bible we're what God calls fools. Yep. Yeah. 
All right, so the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is complete submission to God. It's not submission to the world. It's submission to God and his authority. And so we must accept this righteousness of God as a gift. Um, repenting of sin and receiving Jesus by faith and recognizing that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. As children of the Most High, uh, of course, there's none righteous, no, not one, but are we accept the righteousness that is given to us by his sacrifice? So, and our righteousness is only of him because our righteousness is just pathetic. Uh, our standards, though, as true followers should set us apart from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And that includes uh, setting us apart from the so-called truther community, uh, freedom warriors, uh, whatever kind of movement you want to think of. Uh, we should be different from them. You should, if you are truly following Yeshua, your responses to things that come up in the world People should recognize that it's very different than what um, what would normally happen. And if it doesn't, then um, you should probably read your Bible a little bit more and figure out figure out how it does. Reading your Bible, studying your Bible. Days like today, where we study about how to respond to the wicked world that we're living in should change you mm. a little bit I mean it take takes what you know and and uh, Brings takes, it, it, to another takes level. it to another level yeah. I mean we we discuss things that come up in we discuss things that come up in business and all sorts of things and discuss how how can we handle this situation based on what we've learned today mm -hmm. and um, she gave some great advice about you know finding finding good in whatever person or situation that you're dealing with and it, it can be the most evilest of situations but there's there's good in there somewhere because mm -hmm. the only the only being in this world that is pure evil is the devil everything else has some good in it the devil as it says in the bible was born a murderer mm -hmm. so there is no good in the devil that is as bad as it gets everything everyone else every other spirit every other person every other being there's some good in them somewhere so find it yeah but uh you, you have to test every spirit we've got at least two videos up on testing spirits and that's critical information as well uh you need to know what the bible says about testing spirits because unfortunately when it comes to these astroturfing operations a lot of people aren't testing the spirits and you have got to test those spirits or you're going to be deceived and you're going to be actively promoting evil unintentionally and just know one one small helpful piece of advice is if you're praying for something and whatever answer comes has confusion in it, then it's not the right spirit. I mean that yeah. God is not the author of confusion. Yeah, so, it it doesn't mean that there won't be things that come up that you come upon in the Bible that you don't understand. Right. Because that happens to us. Yeah, sure, all the time. Okay, I you accept it and you move forward. You say, okay, I don't get that right now. That's all right. Um, and that's actually, especially going to happen a lot of prophecy. But the Bible says, be ye separate and I will receive you. So when we put on God's righteousness and submit to him, we'll be called names. Because the world <laughs> doesn't love that. Um, it's confusing. You, you've experienced, when you share, well, this is how we handle these sorts of things. And people are confused. They don't understand. Wait, you do what? I don't, I don't get it. They, it. You can't process it. Uh, you may be told that this is an unwise business practice. Uh, yeah, I, you know, we, we run, we run a business. It's, um, we consult, we, 
we build stuff, we do landscaping and, and mowing and, and, and those things. And I watch a couple of channels to see what's out there business-wise to see how people are handling things. And a common thing, oh my goodness, is to take advantage of every situation you can possibly take advantage of. And I'm sorry, but it's not okay. If you're a business, choose your rates based on what your business is and stick with them. Um, it doesn't matter that someone might be in trouble with the city for their grass being too tall. You have your rates, stick to them. Yeah, well, so the people who are engaging in these nefarious mm -hmm. business practices are really extortioners because mm -hmm. these people... Um, are at the mercy of these companies mm -hmm. to, to get the job done so that they don't have to pay $500 or whatever. So they charge them 300 mm -hmm. for something they normally charge $50. And that is not okay. No, it is not. It is, and, and not, not doing your best to get to every customer that, that comes to you to turn down people just because they're residential. It's not okay either. I mean, if you can do it, if you can physically handle it, and the person is willing to pay your your rates, not your upped rates that you are charging because it's an emergency situation, but your regular ones, if you can do it, you should do it. Right. But this year, this what you've been talking about with um, a lot of residential customers being turned down for mm -hmm. a lot by a lot of um, businesses. Mm -hmm. This plays into the United Nations agendas because they want what they want is for us to be all living in tiny little tin cans in these apartment complexes, which you've been in one of them, mm -hmm. and you said it felt terrible Whoa, in there. Yeah, I, you got dizzy. I think I remember right. I no, I, I don't know if I, I don't remember specifically if I got dizzy, but I was the, this was a few years ago, I was a top candidate for a, for a job in an apartment complex, and it was a concrete jungle, and I just felt weird. I don't, I, I remember wanting to just get out of there. I, I drive a, I drive an F-150, which is a pretty decent sized vehicle and this parking garage was for like a Dodge Neon. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, if you need to look up what that is, just you know, go ahead and do that. But it was very difficult to get around and I felt weird the whole time I was in there. As soon as I left, I felt so much better. And um, what's wrong, kid? What's wrong? What's wrong, man? But yeah, it was. I, I turned them down because I felt just so, so EBGB weird. weird. Yeah. I don't know if I was. I don't remember being dizzy, but I might have been. Yeah, but so buildings can have spirits to them. They you, they can have spirits to them where you you feel like something isn't right here, and you can't put your finger on it. And so, you know, a test of spirit. These that is. The, the the way that businesses are operating in ignoring residential clients is playing right into the United Nations agenda of getting rid of people living in actual houses. And and dumps are starting to uh, they're starting to charge you exorbitant a small guy exorbitant rates mm -hmm. to dump there. Mm -hmm. um, it's I didn't see that one coming, but wow. Three hundred dollars for a, a a truckload or a, a dump a, a dump trailer load, in, in in lieu of the bigger companies that are that they want to to come there. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just as we've mentioned more and more, the situations are going to get harder and harder to deal with. The decisions you're going to have to make are getting harder and harder, and um, the only way that you can keep a clear head, a clear mind, and a clear heart is to put on that armor. Mm -hmm. And the only way to put on that armor is to read about it and understand it. Right, right. So <laughs> when we put on God's righteousness, um, I've already said we and submit to him, we're going to be called names. Um, we might be told that we're in a cult. <laughs> if, if you're studying yourself, 
um, you're going to find that what is taught by the church today is not what the Bible teaches. And so you're probably going to be accused of being in a cult. Sure, it could be a one or two person cult. <laughs> we have been but, accused um, of that. Right, yeah. So, all right, whatever you believe, whatever you want. But you're going to be ashamed. Um, other person who is calling people who are actually studying, you're going to be ashamed in, in, when, it, when mm -hmm. the time comes and unless you repent and believe. Um, you're going to be told you're crazy. Um, I'm going to discuss this later, but um, as far as the governments go, but at least here in the United States, but I, you could be labeled as an enemy of the state. Mm -hmm. And um, if you are a risk to the New World Order, especially spiritually, especially spiritually, then you will be labeled as such. Uh, we are not to conform to the standards of this world for anything. Mm -hmm. And that includes imprisonment and death, as we will study later. All aspects of our lives must conform to God's standards. All of them. Verse 15, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, your feet, there are two aspects to this. One is your feet, they move you in life. right? They take you to different places. Some places are good. Some places are not so good. It denotes your direction. Uh, and the more important aspect of this is that the word preparation of the gospel of peace means foundation. So your feet are shod, or you're wearing shoes, with the foundation of the gospel of peace. If you build a house and you don't have a foundation, you're going to have problems. <laughs> right? Or if the foundation is crummy, you're going to have problems, typically speaking. So a firm and solid knowledge of the gospel in which we stand firm is absolutely necessary here. I will not be shaken, says in the Bible. Uh, in the times of the Roman Empire, reportedly, who knows if this is true or not, um, Roman soldiers had cleats on their shoes and those helped them to stand firm and dig in dig their feet into solid ground. So you have to have the foundation of the gospel of peace. That is the gospel, but also peace. Verse 16, above all, so most importantly, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now here's a weird thing. Uh, the word shield when I looked it up in Greek, um, this word is is for a shield, but it's for a shield that is like a door. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Uh, so it's big. It's big. It's huge. It covers your covers you from head to toe. Mm -hmm. So the shield of faith. Above all, faith. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith. Uh, Jesus repeatedly says, oh, ye of little faith in Scripture. Because people have such little faith. They had such little faith then. They have such little faith today. They think that Satan's in control of everything that's going on. And they think that God is forsaken. They were going to think, if they haven't already thought, that God has forsaken them or punishing them. Because they have no faith, number one. Number two, they don't understand the purpose of suffering. We've got a video up on that. And number three, they aren't studying to show themselves approved unto God. To know, to see what's actually happening is prophecy is being fulfilled before our eyes. It's incredible. It's truly remarkable to be living in this time period in which we're seeing his words come to light. All right, faith is absolute faith in Christ. Taking that shield of faith, wherewith, so with that shield of faith, you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, all of them. And quench means that you extinguish them. Um, the fiery, I found fiery here, the word interesting, because fiery denotes anger. And people, of course, are controlled by their emotions. When the second seal is open, everybody's going to be angry just about, unless they have the mind of Christ. Yeah, and, I mean, people are always going to be... So, the second seal is all about uh, destruction. It's it's uh, 
it's 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 violent. Um, starts out with fire, so um, people are always, and it says so in the Bible and Revelation and probably other places too, that are always going to be trying to come back to normal, and sometimes getting back to normal means fighting for stuff, and people are going to be fighting against flesh and blood for uh, and until the very end. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. And these are going to be people who claim to be believers who are fighting physically. As we'll find in this study, which is not going to be short. Uh, None of them are. Yeah. There's it's how we roll. About. There's a lot to talk about. Well, but there's so much in the Bible on this topic. It's incredible. Um, so quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, this is figurative again. These aren't literal arrows. These aren't literal darts. But um, these are words, accusations, verbal attacks, satanic temptations. Uh, this could could include people who are uh, engaging in false witness against you, which means they're lying about you, and we're repeatedly told that this is coming. That brother against brother, you know, parents against child, child is going to deliver up the parents, brethren against brethren, which means people who claim to be Christians against the true brethren. So, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. So, if you're fighting against flesh and blood, have you ever known throwing punches to solve it? Have you ever known that? I mean, eventually, if a fight breaks out and they get tired or, 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 or whatever, but... One punch brings another punch, brings another punch, brings another. That's no different than trying to fight a, a legal battle with someone. I mean, no, no, no one really, really wins there. You don't really change anything. Now, somebody might win some money or, or whatever, but the, the 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 evil has already been done. I mean, the damage to society in general has already been done and it's going to happen again i mean that's what it's 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 what society does they never society does not learn from its history ever it always repeats it it seems like so fighting against flesh is rather pointless Mm -hmm. really um spiritually though um that's a whole other ball game. Yeah, so. yeah, and the Bible does tell us how to respond to our persecutors. It does tell us how to respond to people who use us and steal from us. It does tell us how to respond to people when they come and demand things. It does tell us how to respond uh, to people, uh, including government authorities, when they ask for something or say we have beggars come along, and say in the third seal if we're still here. It does tell us how to respond to these things, which is truly incredible to me um, that the guidebook is so thorough, but it is. But um, in regards to those who will bear false witness against the brethren, we do have a video up. I believe it's only on YouTube and Odyssey, losing friends and family in the end times. Highly recommend checking it out because um, there's a whole lot of scripture on that and share an experience that we had. Um, These darts also, Um, Some of them will be from people being used by Satan, but some will be from demons, some perhaps from Satan himself. If you are a threat to the New World Order spiritually, you will be on Satan's radar. Mm -hmm. And you want to be on his radar because that means that you're going to be one of of the first people to go. (laughs) You don't want to be here (laughs) during the time of God's wrath. You don't want to be here for a lot of the things that are coming upon the world. Now, don't hurt yourself ever that's not biblical don't ever hurt yourself don't cause harm to other people have to say these things because of the ridiculous world that we live in yeah Um, we are to act in love uh to all of our brethren and all of our non-brethren as well so ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god um helmet again put on the mind of christ put it on think 
Uh, scripture tells us to take every thought captive. Our mind is a battlefield. And so if you have a thought come into your mind, you have to take it captive. You have to pick it up, figuratively speaking, examine it and say, okay, is this of God or is this not of God? And I spoke of this, I believe, in the last video. I mean, the decisions that you're going to have to make are hard sometimes. I mean, businesses right now are um, being... I mean, they're asking you to do things that they've never asked before. I mean, you're, you're being asked, you're being, in some cases, mandated to, to, to you know, maybe take a, take a shot of some sort or um, whatever. I mean, put a, put a facial covering on yourself. I mean, they're, they're, they're asking you to do these things and, um, Depend, depending on your situation, um, you have choice. You can either conform to what they want you to do and just keep going, or you can refuse. And I mean, it may come to the U.S. at some point where if you don't want to do these things, you're fired. I mean, sorry, in case that's that's. I mean. Uh, that's just that's part of it um, but the f it depends on what your familial situation is I mean my she and I um, it's never been a question we have never ever not supported each other for leaving a position for moral reasons ever and that's more important now than, than it ever has been and those moral things are as we've discussed previously, your body is your choice and health isn't one size fits all at all. So the decisions to keep your body as your temple are, I mean, they, they may be more and more costly as we go on, at least in the world. But if you want to have eternal life, it's, um, required. Right, so please see uh, our article and our videos on Pharmacaea on our website because uh, that's highly relevant to the temple of the living God because I share in my article on why Revelation 18 23 is so important now that's the title of it uh, that I share my experience uh, in with Pharmacaea and how it impacted my ability to commune with Holy Ghost you have to be able to have a clear mind um, to even to even begin having these thoughts of morality. You have to have a clear mind of Christ, at least on a basic level. And you can't do that when you're taking all sorts of pharmaceuticals. Um, uh, now, we, we get it that there are certain situations out there and we have to say this because this is the world we live in but there are certain situations out there where stopping a pharmaceutical can um, have pretty dire consequences um, such as transplants and you know that's one example I can think of but um, if you're taking something like excedrin migraine or um, aspirin or you know what not there are responsible ways to get off of those medications and you will be amazed once you're able to accomplish that you'll be amazed at how much clearer your head is. I still get headaches from time to time and it's from the environment. Once the, whatever's in the environment leaves, the headache leaves. It's just a matter of dealing with the headache while it's there. Um, and our that that story is is on our is on it's on a we we have a video off of that I don't remember what it's called but yep good okay so uh, again the helmet of salvation um, it says I can't remember which book in the New Testament where it says but it says the helmet of the hope of salvation uh, because once saved always saved is so easily disregarded as a false doctrine uh, it, repeatedly. 
in scripture. And Jesus actually said that if you fall away, it's better that you'd never know him before. Uh, that's very strong. That's a very strong phrasing, but I didn't say it. That's what he said. So if you're daily repenting and believing and you're studying and you are trying to do the right thing, um, then, you know, there you go. But my Bible says repent and believe. It doesn't say ask Jesus into your heart one time and you're good to go. Then you can do whatever you want. Yay! No, that's not what it says at all. Anywhere. Period. There's, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. and you, you are, as we've talked about repeatedly, you are constant. Satan is, he is busy. Yeah, he is, he is um, it, it comes up everywhere. I mean, it's just a, it, it's a, it's amazing. And you, you, it will surprise you when it does happen, when it comes up. And this video is about, the series is about how to respond to that. And you can't do that if you don't have the mind of Christ. If you're, if you're not at least studying at least a little bit to further your further your knowledge you, you just you're you're not going to know what to do so the second half of verse 17 the sword and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so your sword your weapon is of the spirit which is the word of god now word here is not capitalized so it's not talking about our messiah it's not talking about jesus it's talking about the Bible. It's talking about scripture. Can I say something? Yeah. It says the, 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 what did it say? The, the sword, sword of the spirit. Sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Um, one thing I should mention here is that doesn't necessarily mean that, I mean, it can mean, but it doesn't necessarily mean that if you run into a situation in the world and you just start spouting off verses. <laughs> right. Um, it's probably not going to go over too good. Right. Uh, anywhere. Um, right. You, you, you might you might get the cops called on you and be put into a mental institution or something for something like that. What that can mean is what we have mentioned before in learning how to approach the situations that you come into where... You can see the evil being talked about in a person and you just tell them, well, this is how I would handle that. Or this is how I handle that. And there's no, there's no Bible verses spouted off. There's none of that. It's the loving way that you would handle a situation right there. And it, in my experience so far, it shuts people up. Right. I just don't know what to say. Yeah. But that that is a more um, worldly accepted way to deal with that instead of just. I mean, there are people out there that are with signs, you know. That the it, end is here. Yeah, that that kind of that's God's ignoring that. Really, uh, I mean, it's not it's not accomplishing anything good. People that do that are generally labeled as crazy. Yeah. Uh, no sound, judgment upon that. Just stating no, a fact. There's no sound are, mind in that. No. But the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Again, our battle is spiritual. <laughs> our battle is not physical. So a lot of our battle takes place in our minds and in our hearts. So if you have the, the words of God, if you have scripture memorized, if you know what it says, then when a thought comes in from Satan or one of his minions, then you can re recite a verse or say, no, that's not what God has promised me. You can say, no, that's not what it says in scripture. This is what it says. And it, it's good enough to paraphrase in my opinion, but memorization is um, something that I recommend as much as possible, especially with uh, any verses that really um, hit you at your heart if possible so again the sword is a meta metaphorical sword the sword of the spirit let god fight your battles for you is not saying here that you need to fight with people and fight with the authorities or fight with your boss or 
uh, the company or corporation or New World Order or the government or that's not what it's saying. Now you can try to make there. You can try once or twice to remedy the situation, make it right. But um, after that, you got to give it up. Um, there's companies are if they if they if they don't do the right thing in the first email or phone call, then they're not going to. Right. It's pointless to continue to to try. People, you, I mean. Typically nowadays, um, it's the same. I mean, if, if somebody doesn't respond um, positively to your first attempt to give them the truth, then they're probably not going to. It's, uh, I mean, I, I'd say in the day and age that we're in now, it's um, one and done there too. Although uh, uh, Titus does talk about twice being a, a, a heretic, but my uh i don't see how treating businesses and humans differently would work right now um if you're going to do the right thing you're going to do it the first time around and um there's right but but sometimes there are accidents or things come you know so you bring it to people's attention um but you let god fight your battle you you bring it to their attention and then you let God convict others mm -hmm. of their wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. Or you let him harden their hearts even further as they wander down the path of utter destruction. Uh, if someone hurts you. So you but you have to listen to Holy Ghost for guidance and direction. He the scripture says that he will lead you into all truth and bring all things to your remembrance. So the word of God, our weapons are not of this world. Yet again, um, God's decrees, his commandments, his word, his scripture, the Bible, this is our weapon. How do you know, how, how can you use a weapon if you don't know what it says? How can you use scripture as a weapon if you don't know what it says? There you, you, go. you can't. Uh, thus, our series and our um, consistent reminders to study to show thyself approved. You have to study yourself, almost, not everyone, but almost everyone who is producing content, whether it be um, blog posts, articles, books, journal articles, um, other academic content, videos, uh, docu series, documentaries, <laughs> all of these things. Almost everyone is easily classified as a false prophet. Got a video up on YouTube and Odyssey. How to identify a false prophet. Uh, so there's lots of scripture on that as well. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Again, pray and watch. Watch and pray. That's not the only time it's, it's here in scripture. So stop looking down at the devices of Satan with the fear-mongering videos. Look up. The verse, look up for your redemption draws near. If you, if you would look up, you would, there, there, I'll just point out a couple of things. Right now, 20 years ago, you could, you could look at the sun and, um, I mean, it would hurt your eyes after a little bit. But you could you could still look at it. Now, you can't look at it. It's a, it's a flashlight. Um, if you pay attention to where the moon is at, it makes absolutely no sense. There's no rhyme or reason to where it shows up on any given day. Just pay attention to it daily. It also doesn't um, have a rhyme or reason or what time. That, I mean, if you look up in the sky and you see this cloud-like thing that's a relatively perfect circle, that's the moon during the day. <laughs> I mean, come on now. And then you'll see planes flying above, leaving a cloud of what looks like a cloud behind it. 
um, and then on a crystal clear day, and then all of a sudden it's cloudy. What do you think is going on with that? Yeah. So if you look up, you're going to see that the times are changing, and things are things are happening. There are signs in the sky. The Bible says multiple times there are signs mm-hmm. in the skies. So um, just yeah. keep looking up. Yeah, well, so when we first moved to this county in 2014, there was approx- it was approximately once a month that they would spray in the sky. One spray. Because I was outside a lot. Um, it was in the middle of a 50-acre woods, which, man, that was super nice to be in the middle of a 50-acre woods. But oh, yeah. also, whoo, super expensive. Uh, yeah. That was a rental. Wow, that was a... Uh... Yeah, but uh, now... It's very rare that we encounter a day where there isn't any at all. But yesterday and today, I don't think we've noticed any. We have had more than 24 hours, approaching 36 hours of crystal clear blue sky. And I can't remember the last time that happened. Yeah, and usually they start spraying around sunrise and then are on and off the rest of the day. And we could watch it. We can see it happening. Uh, we have eyes, and we are looking up because we know our redemption is drawing near. So Ephesians 19 and 20, remember this is Paul writing. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Did you hear that? He's saying, I ought to. To speak boldly. So if he ought to speak boldly, and he says somewhere in the New Testament, I don't remember where, that to be followers of him, to follow him, to imitate him as he imitates Christ, then we are to speak boldly. Yes, we are to speak uh, the truth and the gospel boldly because our God is perfectly capable of protecting us in whatever way he sees fit. And he has ordained our steps and what will happen to us and when it will happen to us. In this brave new world, uh, we live in the U.S., so that's our perspective on mm-hmm. things. In the summer of 2021, our wonderful, lovely president, Joe Biden, mm-hmm. uh, he submitted a publication. I don't remember what it was called, but he declared that the president of the United States could decide that someone was an enemy of the state due to ideology. And he Mm -hmm. published it. This is published. This is public record. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to say anything. They just have to have an ideology. So if you identify as a Christian and the president of the United States declares all all Christians to be enemies of the state, you don't have to do or say anything wrong except... I'm a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're an enemy of the state. Similarly, as we continue in this new normal, in 2022 here, the Department of Homeland Security recently published a uh, document that says that the number one terrorism threat for the United States is mis, dis, and malinformation. That's the number one terrorism threat? Seriously? And if you don't think that is... If you don't think that what's going on in the world right now... If you think it is real... If you think it is not hinky... Then what would be the need for this? Yeah. I mean, if what if the information that was out there... That... Um, that if, if, if our country truly valued the freedoms that we were supposedly founded on, why would this be necessary? Um, this, is, this is why we don't battle with flesh. Well, I mean, the Bible says not to, but the, this is a huge reason why that would be the case. Because most of the time, it doesn't make a lick of sense. Right. Right. So as far as definitions go, misinformation and disinformation, they seem to be 
using or using different terms and changing the definitions. I mean, they've changed definitions all the time on us. Uh, so basically it's information that goes against the grain of the scientific elite. Um, if it if it goes in opposition to anything that Fauci says, then that's misinformation or disinformation. Um, they keep changing the definition, so who knows what it is right this second. But if it goes in opposition of the narrative, if it's counter to the narrative, despite the factual basis and the evidence thereof, that's um, that's a number one terrorism threat. Uh, also, malinformation. Malinformation is accurate information. The government does not disagree that it's truthful, but it compromises the trust of others in their authorities. It compromises their trust in the government. That is malinformation according to the United States, hmm. according to the Department of Homeland Security. So anyone who spreads mis, dis, or malinformation is therefore considered the number one terrorism threat of the Department of Homeland Security. Now, a lot of people get upset about these facts. They get upset when they hear about these things. All right, so here's the thing. If you read scripture, such as the book of Revelation, you'll find that the saints, the, the people who are really following uh, after their Lord and Savior, they're probably gonna be beheaded at some point during the tribulation. And so we're pointed to that sort of thing. Uh, or it's, it doesn't mean that you are or that we are, but in general, uh, if you read Revelation, what you find are multiple incidences of this sort of thing. And so as you study end times prophecy, uh, we've got so many videos up on it, of course, you'll find that you don't wanna be here during the time of God's wrath, and you'll find that the sixth seal is, the events leading up to that are horrendous and unbelievable uh, as it is, but that's how God saves us. Isaiah 57, one, um, the righteous perisheth, but and no man taketh it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, but no man considereth that the merciful are taken away from the evil to come. So that's how God saves his elect. Uh, there are two churches that are that remain faithful in the, as far as the seven churches of the book of Revelation go. And one of them says, some of you will be thrown into prison. You'll have tribulation 10 days. And uh, be thou faithful unto death. And you'll receive the crown of life. And remember, we have a video up on the seven churches somewhere. Yeah. And it's not actually talking about the literal church the seven churches of the Rev of revelation are groups of people mm -hmm. um so it if you read that and you fall into one of those cat it's more instead of churches it's more categories of the type of people that are that are out there that um whatever whatever you fall in there um that's directed towards you. Um, yeah. There are, it's not, <laughs> the, the seven churches can be, uh, unless you've read your Bible, you might think that it was talking about the uh, the different faiths. Um, there, I mean, it, the world says that there are multiple faiths, but there's only one. So um, the, the seven churches are, the different groups of people and what they value in life mm -hmm. and what what that makes them fall under. Mm -hmm. so. so right, so this this edict by Biden and this publication from the Department of Homeland Security and uh, I know that other countries have similar things um, that have come out. All of those things are not anything to be angry about, mm -hmm. right? This is the fulfillment of prophecy, my friend. It's that freight train. Yes. Uh, similarly, the Noahide list. Uh, yes, yes, our governments are tracking us. Yes, they're, we're all under a surveillance state. Yeah, of course. And yeah, it's being set up to be even more intense. Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what's, what's interesting, I found this interesting. We, well, once she'll have 
pretty rough days breathing sometimes and um, with those she'll look at the satellite launches and one particular day it we looked up we looked them up and they were literally it, it described what the each satellite was for I mean there were uh, there were a bunch launched and there were I think three different reasons that they were launched and one of them was it wasn't the the term of wasn't um, spying or anything but it's what it's a, it's a big is a big word for spying can't remember what it was I can't, can't quite remember but it it means if you're if if you're going to to check out a place because you're up to no good or something that's what the satellite was launched to look at Is it reconnaissance yes reconnaissance oh, yeah. it was a reconnaissance satellite now come on yeah i mean Really? Right. It, of course, they're dirigibles. It's it. They're, yeah. I mean, it's right out there in front of you. All you have to do is know where to go look and look and see. So there's literally satellites up there to re, to go on reconnaissance missions to check you out to watch what you were doing. Right. And so similarly, um, we were discussing. So we have chickens, yep. and um, all of our neighbors know that we have chickens. You You're, can't keep them quiet. They they're they're loud. Right, right. So, but besides that, um, there is currently an avian flu outbreak um, here in our state, and it's only about an hour away from us. So that's uh, we've discussed how we've come out of Babylon as much as possible. We don't mm -hmm. keep track of headlines and stuff. Um, most of the headlines that I am aware of are a result of like incredibly fast reading and not even intentional reading when I share a video to the video platforms. And most of the, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, um, and, uh, but I had a friend who brought to my attention about the avian flu outbreak, um, which by the way, thus far has, uh, man, they've taken down over 100,000 turkeys on three factory farms um, here in Southern Indiana. And, uh, of course, it can't possibly be from microwave radiation. It can't possibly be that the food was toxic. It can't possibly be uh, that they're spraying crap in the air. Or it can't be that they're all getting the same tainted, chemically contaminated water. That can't be it. It's got to be a virus. And so, oh, and by the way, it's because of wild geese. Let's blame the wild geese now. And, uh, but this is relevant to me, to us, because we have chickens. And I know what happened in California a few years ago. And they went around, the state went around, um, and if somehow they knew everyone who had background chicken, backyard chickens at that time. And this was, I believe, 2019. And so this was before Five Gur rollout. And um, somehow they knew who had backyard chickens, mm -hmm. and they went and they gassed them all. Um, so a lot of people who had backyard chickens uh, were taking care of things humanely themselves. And so this is relevant to us. Uh, we mm -hmm. want our, if anything, if we can no longer have chickens, which a time is coming, that that will be the case. The war on livestock is real. Uh, if you search our Odyssey channel, I believe for livestock, in the Old Testament, it's very clear that God is going to take out livestock um, from the earth. Uh, during the during the end times and so that's part of the fulfillment of prophecy so we know that a time is coming that that's going to be the case and so um, we are mentally and spiritually prepared for that but we also need to know when um, any edicts come down the pipeline so that we can take care of things ourselves mm -hmm. um, because number one we don't want um, any government officials on our property with their cell phones and all of their Wi-Fi and because that impacts my heart and that can be very, um, very, very, very bad for me. Very, very, very bad situation. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so that's number one. But number two, uh, they might poison our animals just by the testing. And number three, um, it, the tests, of course, are bunk because they're all bunk. But the fact is that if a test comes back positive, then they might do things forcibly um, to the animals that 
uh, we believe are unethical. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you have to use your sound mind in these perilous times in, in knowing what can affect you and what you need to specifically keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. And so I am keeping an eye on that epidemic uh, because they, ha they said um, in the news report one of the actually multiple news reports that they had that the state had reached out to all of the um, hobby chicken holders or whatever everyone who had chickens within a certain perimeter um, and told them that they need to submit to testing and so it wasn't a question of well um, you know if voluntarily or even an edict that said uh, you know, you need to have your chickens tested, you know, call us to have your chickens tested. It was, we know, mm -hmm. we know who's got chickens mm -hmm. and this is what you need to do. We've reached out already. This is what you need to do. And we know that you have chickens. And so, <laughs> um, how would they know, <laughs> uh, unless everybody's being surveilled. So, um, the, the people get upset and angry about FEMA camps as well. Um, those are just part of prophecy. Part of it's part of all of it. So you had something to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I and I'm I have noticed we we have a lot going on here. We we do a lot of things every week as, for to help ourselves and for work and and such for for business stuff. And I mentioned. Um, seeing stuff on YouTube and, and various things, um, I am finding that it is harder and harder to find people to do, to do work that you can trust to do, to, to fix things. So, um, I'm finding that searching YouTube for just how to do stuff, you know, how how to do that electrical wiring how to how to solder how to the the best the best way to fix it the um um can't think of the um welding the the, the welding is the next thing um i as as prophecy is revealed or fulfilled i mean it is going to be harder and harder to um, find people to do these skills so learning how to do them and then you you see headlines of various and sundry various and sundry things so those are a couple of the ways that we keep an eye on what's going on I mean it will be vital I mean these are good skills to learn but it will be vital as she was talking about anything that we can do to keep people off our property because she we're, we're both sensitive to it but it it can it can cause her serious serious um heart problems so i mean she had a heart event at, at one point one time but already it's getting harder and harder to find people that will that will do things and and not take advantage or do things at all I mean it, the, the workforce is smaller there's companies around here that have had their hiring signs up for over a year <laughs> and they're still up so mm -hmm. yeah yeah but everything that's happening is the fulfillment of prophecy mm -hmm. so what you have to do is you need to read prophecy <laughs> learn prophecy uh, seek the Holy Ghost for guidance in understanding prophecy. You need to study and find out how to respond to whatever may come. And uh, for example, um, well, everything that we've shared thus far, but we have a lot more to share yet. But most importantly, um, at this moment in time where we're at in scripture is where Paul is saying that we ought to speak boldly regarding the gospel. So we are not brave. We're just obedient. And we are bold in our speech regarding the gospel because we are obedient. And we know that as long as we are obedient, that's all that matters. 
that is number one to us and hopefully that's number one to you as well mm-hmm. being and bold to speak can mean whatever you are led with if you are led by God to speak in some way to someone then and you know it's God then um, it is it's it's obviously the right right thing to do um, I speaking boldly can mean telling someone a verse that comes to your heart it can or it can just mean talking to people responding to situations in ways that um, just people don't talk that way anymore so yeah I'm done right now are you done I can be done all right thanks so much for being here (laughs) have a most beautiful and blessed day please give this video a thumbs up on toxic cat